We're joined now from Washington by the exiled Crown Prince of Iran, Reza Pahlavi. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us here on the program. First of all, your reaction to the events of the weekend where we saw 300 drones, um, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles uh, launched, uh, barrage launched uh, on, on Israel. Well, first and foremost, let's understand that this regime is becoming weaker and weaker and desperate by the minute. Uh, interestingly enough, at the same time they launch uh, this uh, attack against Israel, they also launch an attack on Iranian women at home. The repression at home and aggression abroad has been part and parcels of the basic strategy of this regime that is trying to export an ideology from day one. And this is why we have come to this point. There was also a matter of domestic consumption and a lot of uh, propaganda trying to satisfy their base, but to the detriment of a nation that are the first victim of this regime. If you look at it from this perspective, Israelis, Iranians, Palestinians, Lebanese, Syrians, Iraqis, everybody is ultimately impacted by what this regime is trying to do. We have to look beyond just well, uh, the, a the regime have certainly attack. tried to. It, the regime has certainly tried to sell it back to the Iranian people as, as some kind of success. In fact, we, we spoke to the uh, Iranian ambassador to the UN today and, and he said, uh, as far as we're concerned, this operation was successful. Well, the way majority of uh, my compatriots look at it is billions of dollars wasted on weaponry that prove to be ineffective at the end of the day, while Iranians are queuing for food and, and, and fuel, worrying about what could happen next under an uh, extremely bad economic situation. Uh, our country uh, is not going to benefit from this regime that doesn't spend a dime on the needs of our society. Instead, it finances its uh, proxies in the region in order to maintain itself in power. This is the bottom line uh, take that Iranians have of the situation. And as you well know, and I think a lot of the leaders in the region, including the Israelis, know very well that Iranians do not at all stand what, with what this regime stands for. What they call for is the exact opposite of what this regime is. What do you think, uh, Mr. Pahlavi, will happen next? Because, of course, Israel is having discussions. They're, they're having uh, very serious debates here about what to do next. Uh, they are split, but the feeling is there needs to be some kind of response. What do you think Iran will do next? Look, I mean, I, I'm not going to get into speculating as to who is going to do what and whether this will escalate or not. What I can tell you, however, is that the ultimate solution that puts an end to all the problems that are d directly tied to this regime, whether it's the nuclear threat or radicalism or terrorism or uh, lack of uh, stability in the region, is for this regime to be put to an end. The Iranian people have uh, launched uh, for, for a long time uh, a, a fight for freedom. I think to, this is the time where the world can make an ultimate decision with a major shift in policy that rather than pursuing avenues of diplomacy and appeasement that only embolden this regime to do exactly what we have seen lately is to put an end to it by that, supporting for change that will... the Iranian people who are the alternative. Yeah, I mean, you've uh, formed uh, some sort of, uh, you know, opposition, a coalition. But do you feel as though anyone is listening or willing to support it? Well, that's exactly what I think now the world, especially after what has happened recently, have to begin thoroughly as to how long can we pursue the status quo and hoping for a different outcome, as opposed to this regime has been given plenty of opportunities to come into, into fold, and it hasn't. And the reason is very simple, because the survival of this regime depends on maintaining the, the same repression they have for decades now inside Iran, but also to have a campaign of exploitation of an ideology. As long as this regime continues to exist, we will not see an end to it. This is why the Iranian people well, are well, the most I, natural you know, ally to the free world need to be supported. I, as you know, I mean, the only way for regime change is from within, when there is weakness from within the regime. But, but is that the case? I mean, does it appear to be any cracks? Of course. Of course. I mean, look, millions of Iranians, despite that level of terror and repression against them, have bravely shown their courage by standing up to this regime for weeks and months at a time. 
There has been ebbs and flows, of course, but they are still persisting and resilient to do anything they can. The question that is lacking right now is where is the support from the outside world? Why is the world still engaged in trying to expect a, a change of behavior by the regime rather than to invest on the alternative to this regime, which is the Iranian people, towards uh, a secular democratic alternative in the future of a country as opposed to a religious dictatorship that is ideologically uh, the, the, the worst uh, enemy of stability and peace. Uh, their objective and their whole triumph is uh, talk about martyrdom and getting their reward in the afterworld. We're talking about uh, the current situation of bringing peace and stability in the region and partnership with our neighbors, the total opposite of this regime. I think the time has come for the world to make a final decision on the subject, and this is where we need to have a two-pronged approach increasing the pressure on the regime by means of further sanctions, but also having a policy of maximum support for the Iranian people. This is something that we need to discuss okay. seriously now with uh, world leaders and government decision makers.